as we lift our hearts, as we offer up this praise unto your name. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Good morning and welcome to another gathering of the remnant. To our virtual family members as well as our face-to-face -face members, I bid you now to come. Gather with the remnant. Let us engage our God, nourish our people, restore our faith, and equip ourselves for the work, the will, and the ways of our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. Come go with me now to the first book of the Old Testament. And we'll start at the 37th chapter, the 12th verse. The first book of the Old Testament, the 37th chapter the 12th verse. I'll be reading from the New King James Version, the word. Then his brothers went to feed their father's flock in Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, are you not with your brothers feeding the flock in Shechem? Come, I will send you to them. So he said to him, here I am. Then he said to him, please go and see it is all well with your brothers and well with the flocks and bring back word to me. So he sent him out of the valley of Hebron and went to Shechem. Now a certain man found him. And there he was wandering in the field and the man asked him saying, what are you seeking? So he said, I am seeking my brothers. Please tell me where they are feeding their flocks. And the man said, they have departed from here. For I heard them say something about, let us go to Dotham. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them in Dotham. Now when they saw him afar off, even before he came near them, they conspired against him. To kill him. Then they said to one another, Look, the dreamer is coming. Come, therefore, let us now kill him and cast him into some pit, and we shall say to our father, Some wild beast has devoured him. Then we shall see what will become of his dreams. So ends the reading of God's word but never the power contained therein. Amen. Looking back at the B sentence of the last sentence of the last verse heard in our reading, we hear these words. Then we shall see what will become of his dreams. Then we shall see what will become of his dreams. So ends the reading of God's word, but never the power contained therein. From the scripture heard in our reading, I offer you a message this morning entitled, What Becomes of a Dreamer? What Becomes of a Dreamer? Let us pray. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. Help us. Nothing more, nothing less, nothing else. Amen. I'm sure we all know individuals who can sit and stare into the sky and ponder seemingly meaningless thoughts. They have the propensity to see that which isn't as if though it were. They appear airy and transcendental, 
always asking, why are things the way they are? Why do things have to be the way that they are? Why can't things change? And why do they have to remain the same all the time? What about this? What about that? They've got thousands and thousands of questions. And before they're finished asking one thought, another fills their mind as if the last 300 thoughts were not enough. If you know a person like that, you know a dreamer. You probably shook your head at them and said, what becomes of a dream? And for the moment, I'm going to turn this mic down because I think the message is better if you can hear it more clearly. Good. Is that good right there? Okay. Hopefully we won't get this close. Stay away. Now, there's two kinds of people that I want to discuss in this text. One is a dreamer, and then there are realists. A realist does not understand a dreamer. For the realist doesn't encircle the same ethereal space as a dreamer. The realist feet are always planted solidly on the ground. They have constructed principles that have, if they're never violated, if those principles are violated, they believe the world will turn upside down. So they operate under these principles to create their own personal constitution for living. And they work feverishly at maintaining them. It's how they get their stuff done. Something about a realist, if it violates their principle, they'll do one or two things. They'll either try to control it or they'll try to destroy it. Because it violates what they believe things ought to be the way they ought to be. So there's a sense of control that's needed here. They must reach out and take you and plant you in front of them and say, boy, this is the way it's always been done. My daddy did it this way. We did it this way. And this is the way it's got to be done. Say, be real with yourself. Don't start out that, that I, don't, I don't deal with all that wishy-washy stuff. I need you to tell me straight up. Tell me straight up. I don't, want, don't, don't take me around the corner and around the bend. A realist wants to know if you can keep it real. And when life throws them a curveball, an ideal that they can't see coming. Something now, every now and then, they have to dig a little deeper to ensure I shall not be moved. You see that in church folk. Lots of church folk, they, they, they staple down and they sit in there and they make sure, no, nah, we can't change the carpet, Pastor. No, nah, no. Nah. It's got to be red. And they, they, they hold fast to it because there's something inside of them that for them, in order to see something different or to see a change, you must go through my principles of understanding before you get to where you're going. Yet, dreamers are different. For they are dreamers who dream dreams that come from their conscience and sometimes their unconscious mind. Because we're all dreamers. We all have dreams. Have you ever had one of them dreams that scared you to death and you had to wake up from the dream because you were so afraid of the dream, of what you dreamt before? Or what about that dream 
that felt so good about what you was doing and everything was like working and you like, oh, this is like butter. And you wake up and you go, oh, and then you try to go back to sleep to catch the dream. Or what about that dream when you're falling? And everybody say when you're falling, if you hit the ground, you're going to do what? Yeah. yeah, that dream. So we all dream. And it comes from different places and different spaces in our minds and in our souls. So, but then there are dreamers that dream the dreams that are God-given. A dream is something that you see when you're asleep or unconscious. A vision is something that you see when you're wide awake. And visions and dreams are pretty much the same. You can sit and look out into the ocean front when you go on your vacation and you sit in that chair and you just watch the waves buckle and move ebb and flow and it's so peaceful and you feel the wind on your face and the shore and the little bubbles of water hitting you. And you're not thinking about anything in particular. And then all of a sudden something crosses your mind. And you're like, I've seen that before. Some people call it deja vu. When it happens to you and you go, wait a minute, wait a minute. I've never seen this before. And that vision and that dream comes forth. And, 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 and this is where we are today in the text. I'm not going to hold you long. We have a 17-year-old Joseph and 11 of his brothers living in the, in, the, in the land of Canaan. Joseph was a tender of the sheep with his brothers. We're told that Jacob's father or Joseph, Jacob's father, loved Joseph more than any of his other sons. I don't know how that can be. But sometimes when I'm around my family, I'll tell my family members, Mama loved me more than she loved y'all. Many of us know this because his love for Joseph, his father gave Joseph a coat of many colors. And back in the day, color was very important. It signified certain things about what was happening within the individual's life. So the brothers hated Joseph and gave Joseph the side eye every chance they got. And this began because of the reasoning of his father giving him a coat and he didn't give me one. Somebody know what I'm talking about. Plus, Joseph is the baby boy. He's the youngest one. It was, he was born out of the old age of Joseph. And Joseph didn't think he could have any more sons. And I don't care what you say. Every man that has a baby in his heart of hearts, he's in the closet playing, give me a boy. Give me a boy. And finally, not only does he have a baker's dozens of boys, but Joseph is the baby boy. So the brothers hated Joseph for a couple of reasons. One is because mama and daddy is always loving on him. Two, because daddy seems to be giving him all the extra stuff when the older brothers and sisters, they're supposed to receive it first before it goes to the baby because that's the way the Jewish tradition was. Amen. Anything that was inherited went to the oldest. After them, the next oldest. So why is Joseph getting all the good stuff? And why does dad love him more? So they began to reason with themselves and ask the question, what becomes of a dreamer? Joseph, Joseph's brothers didn't know that God was watching and listening to everything that they said and thought and how they treated Joseph. 
So God began giving Joseph's messages through dreams. One day Joseph woke up excited and ran to his brothers and said to them, listen, listen to this dream I just had. We were all binding sheaves of grain out in the field when suddenly my sheaf rose and stood upright while your sheaves gathered around mine and bowed down to it. Now, Joseph was probably telling them about this dream without knowing or acknowledging that his brothers were already sick of him. For what their daddy had done with the coat of many colors. And I can only imagine Joseph running to his older brothers and asking them, what does this dream mean? What does this dream mean? Because he doesn't know he's 17. He's just figuring out this thing called life. And the older brothers, he would always ask them, if you got an older brother, you go to him. You're the younger brother, you go to him. And so Joseph is running to them, trying to get an understanding of what's happening in his own head. So he's asking them to interpret the dream. And I believe Joseph was expecting his older brothers to explain the dream to him because Joseph wasn't quite sure what to make of the dream. But instead of getting clarification of his dreams, his brother said to him, so you think you're going to reign over us? Do you really think that you're better than us? And they hated him all the more because of his dream, his coat, his love. And what that dream meant. Joseph probably went away more puzzled than ever at this point. He was probably thinking and asking himself, what becomes of a dreamer? Then Joseph had another dream. And with the same enthusiasm and excitement, he went running to his brothers again and told his brothers, listen, listen, he said, I had another dream. And this time the sun and the moon and the stars, it was 11 stars, and they all bowed down to me. This time his father was there. And when their father heard this dream, Joseph's own father rebuked him and said, what is this dream you had? Will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow down to the ground before you? Wow. Here is Joseph believing that dad is going to set me straight and give me information that I need. And rather than setting me straight, he slapped him in the face. Who do you think you are, boy? You better get real because that's not the way this thing operates. Oh, come on, somebody. Joseph, brothers was more through with him than ever before. But his father kept the matter in mind and probably asked the question, what becomes of a dreamer? Time passed, and one day his brothers went to the graze his father's flock near Shechem, and Joseph didn't go with them, so the father came and said, Go and see that all is well with your brothers and the flocks and tell me how many things and how things are going. When Joseph arrived in Shechem, which is where we picked up in the text, Joseph found a man that was wandering in the same field that his brothers were supposed to be in. Now here's the thing. The brothers hated Joseph, but watch this. Joseph loved his brothers. I want you to think about this now. Your brother don't like you, but you love your brother. You will go and do whatever you can for your brother. But they won't do that for you.
No, 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 we're not going to get all wishy-washy. We'll say it like it is. We'll do all we can for the ones we love, and then they turn around and look at us like, let me peel you off. Now you go your way. So here's Joseph running around trying to find his brothers, do what his father said do, love his brothers, try to catch up with them so that he can then do the work that needs to be done. So he meets this man, and the man says to him, yeah, I heard them say something about going to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them near Dothan. But when they, the brothers, saw Joseph coming from a distance. Hey, y'all remember the text of the son and uh, the prodigal father? And they saw the son way off. And he started celebrating when he saw his son from way off coming back to him. It was a joyous thing. But now we've got the direct opposite here. We've got brothers seeing Joseph coming from afar. And they're going, yo, there he is. Here he come. Here comes that dreamer. The one that's sitting around looking in the sky, talking about all these things that's breaks the whole habit and the constitution of what we do around here. Here he come, that one, him, here he comes. You know what? Before he gets here, let's, let's, let's end this now. We need to end this now. What y'all think? Huddle up. So what's the plan? How are we going to do this? So the brothers decide, you know what? Let's, let's throw him in a cistern, which is a barrel that has no water in it or it carries water. Let's throw him in the cistern, and then we'll leave him out there to die, and, and if we get back home and Daddy wants to know about his favorite son, we'll tell him that the wild beast ate him, and uh, he's, he's gone, Dad. Just come now. Let's kill him and throw him into the cistern. And when our father asks where his beloved son is, we can say that a ferocious animal devoured him. Then we'll see what becomes of his dreams. We're going to take care of him, and then we'll see what he says if it will come true without him. What? will become of a dreamer. So, what are some of the things that we can learn from the story of this dreamer? One of the things that we can get from the dreamer, Joseph, is that we have to be careful who we tell our dreams to. We can't be all excited going to tell people what God is going to do for us and what God is doing for us and what God has did for us. Sometimes you just have to look at him and just say, I know my God. And leave it like that because sometimes there are dream crushers in the world. And they'll take your dream and they'll put it underfoot and they'll stomp on it and they'll turn on it. And all of a sudden, they won't give you the help that you need because they don't understand your dream. I don't mean no harm by it. They just don't understand it. And that which they don't understand, they will either destroy or control it. God, somebody know what I'm talking about. The, another thing that we can learn from Joseph the dreamer is whenever we have dreams, the dreams of God, 
that dreams shall come to pass. Who's going to stop God from doing what God wants to do? Is there anybody here that's big enough and bad enough to stop God from doing what God wants to do? So it don't matter what they say. It don't matter what they do. Our God will see it through. Sometimes we get mindful that we got more power to stop the power of God. And we ain't doing nothing but stopping our own providential care. Because there is a place for people to go that don't do what God has called them, come on somebody, to do. Sooner or later, you've got to make a choice in life. Sooner or later, you're going to have to decide. You know they're both real. They talk about heaven. People talk about heaven. And people talk about hell. And don't act like you ain't heard it before. You know the deal. Now you don't want to be a realist. Oh, you want to be a realist when it's convenient. But you know what the word says. But yet you do not do? Be real. Ah, no, I take that back. Keep it 100. Every realist is either working for a dreamer or is constructing the dreamer's dream. A realist can't do anything without a dreamer. Because they don't have the imagination of God. A realist can't do anything without a dreamer, but a dreamer does what a dreamer does without the aid of a realist. They dream. And that's all you get is the dream. And sometimes, just like it's Joseph, he didn't even understand his own dream. He needed somebody to explain it to him. But dreamers will keep on dreaming. And no matter what you say and no matter what you do, you're not going to stop them from dreaming. So, regardless of what the realist thinks, they would never stop a dreamer from dreaming. Looking side-eyed at the dreamer or thinking there's not enough there, there to get what's needed to get done or believing the dream will fail because it doesn't have the proper structure, principles, or constitution. Beware that every God-given dream has the providential care of God behind it. God is pushing this thing forward. God is correcting it along the way. God is moving it into position, reshaping it every day. The dream that you have that God has given you is moving behind you, running in front of you, standing beside you, and lifting you up from the bottom. Every dream you have that God has given you. He did not give you a dream for it not to come true. A God-given dream has God's power behind it. And with God's power behind it, it can do nothing. It can't even fail. But using the words of my, my brother E. Dewey Smith, it can fail if he wants it to. Because he's just that kind of God. Some things are God allowed. And some things... Are God willed. So you, you have to determine in your dream, what is God saying to me? Are you allowing me to do this, oh God? Or are you telling me to do this, oh God? Somebody know what I'm talking about. And that's the prayer life. That's what you got to discover. That's what you got to go in the closet for. You got to figure that out. Is this what you want me to do or is this what something I have to go through?
For our God is not a God of default. Our God is not a God of failure. Our God is not a God of disappointment. Our God is not a God of lacking, but a God of plenty. Our God is the God of all gods, the principle of all principles, the constitution of all constitutions. No matter what you make, no matter what you do, no matter what you think, it's God first. And you are somewhere along the line in one position. I think that's a military term. However, without realists in our text this morning to help bring the dreamer's dream to reality, the dreamer's dream would have remained just a dream. Had Joseph, other older brother Reuben, not told his brothers not to kill Joseph, but to sell him for 20 shekels of silver to the Ishmaelites, we wouldn't know what becomes of a dreamer. Amen. Had the Ishmaelites not sold Joseph to Potiphar, one of Pharaoh's officials, the captain of the guard, we wouldn't know what would become of a dreamer. Amen. Had Potiphar's wife not put a move on Joseph to get Joseph to sleep with her, we wouldn't know what becomes of a dreamer. Had not Pharaoh not thrown Joseph into prison because Potiphar's wife's lies and accusations, we might not know what becomes of a dreamer. Had Joseph not continued to tell his dreams along with interpreting the dreams of those imprisoned with him, we might not know what becomes of a dreamer. Had Joseph not interpreted the Pharaoh's dream correctly, Egypt might not have been saved from the famine, and we might not know what become of a dreamer's dream. Stay with me now. I'm almost done. Come on, baby girl. Preach this with me. Listen, had Pharaoh not placed Joseph in charge of all of Egypt because he correctly had his dream told to him by Joseph, we might not know what becomes of a dreamer's dream. Had Jacob and his 11 brothers and sisters had not been forced to come to Egypt because the food in Egypt was a famine in the land, we might not know what would become of a dreamer. Amen. Had not Jacob's father and all of his family and his 11 brothers had not come to Egypt and bowed down to Joseph to receive the food they were so desperately needing because of the famine that was correctly interpreted by Joseph for Pharaoh, which saved all of Egypt, we might not know. What becomes of a dreamer's dream? So when a realist tells the dreamer what's not going to happen or looks at the dreamer side-eyed because of what God showed the dreamer in a dream, it doesn't matter that the dream won't happen. It just simply means that they can't understand because they're not a dreamer. Amen. So look. Look for the dreams God has for you. Harriet Tubman told us this. 
Bitch, that's what she said. <laughs> Tell her what she said. Every great dream begins with a dreamer, right? So always remember we have within us the strength, the patience, and the passion to reach the stars of the universe and to change the world we live in with a dream, with a dream. Nelson Mandela once said, a winner is a dreamer who never gives up. Martin Luther King Jr. once said, one day, even in the state of Mississippi, a state sweltering with the heat of interposition and nullification would be transformed into an aces of freedom and justice. He dreamed that his four little children would one day live in a nation where we would not be judged by the color of our skin, but the content and the character of our heart. It was a dream. What becomes of a dreamer? Do we just discard them, cast them off to the side because they willy-nilly and can't seem to make up their mind? So Remnant, I want you to know that every good thing on this earth, I want you to hear me now, every good thing on this earth started with a dream. Fire started with a dream. Airplanes and cars started with someone who laid down in the bed and wondered, how can I get to the air and fly in places where no one else has flown before? And people was telling the Wright brothers, this is crazy. How do you think that's going to happen? And now we got planes that can fly from New York to China in 17 hours. Everything starts with a dream. Amen. Amen. And so the dreams that you have, or maybe you don't have, maybe they're dreams that you need to have. But you got to get something straight first. You got to find out if what you are currently doing now, God willed or God allowed. And if you are not working on your God-given dream, you're working on someone else's dream. God-given dreams are dreams of a better tomorrow. God-given dreams are dreams of a better love. God-given dreams are dreams of a better way. God-given dreams are dreams of a better day. But we can't get to the day until we go through the night. Somebody know what I'm talking about. So dreamers. When you meet a realist, and realist, when you meet a dreamer, know that each of you need each other. Because we now know what becomes of a dreamer. So dream on, dreamers. Dream on. This has been a word of God for the people of God for the edification of God's kingdom.